Hey everybody, and welcome to Curare Magic Library. Now, this is an interesting game that I had actually found on the PlayStation Network last week. And it is a free to play game, which is a game that you can download completely for free. You can play it, but it does have uh, microtransactions in the game. Uh, so, you know, if you want to get ahead quickly, or if you um, don't want to grind, through the levels and keep replaying levels, then you can go ahead and you can buy what you need with actual real money uh, on the PlayStation Network store. Now, excuse me, I never do that for these games. You know, I go ahead, I play them until I've had enough or I've reached as far as I can, and then my interest kind of wanes. I'm from the old school of thought where it's like, look, if you're gonna release a game, release it fully. You know, release it complete where everything that you need or everything that um, you would like to get, you can access through the game without having to go any extra routes and pay money for it. Now, this is a free game, but I would prefer that they would sell this game at retail price without the microtransactions, um, just so that the game could be a complete package. Like, one of the games that's like that that I don't agree with is Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon was a good game uh, that I was playing for a while when it first came out on the PlayStation 3, but I literally reached a part where I couldn't progress because my characters were so weak. Not weak because I didn't have what I needed in the game uh, to make them stronger, but weak because there was such a radical jump that the game almost forced you um, to purchase more things to level up your character's HP so that they could just survive the encounters that were coming up. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I put that game down, never to pick it up again. But um, yeah, I, I uh, this is not one of those games. It's not a fee to pay game, which I do disagree with. But enough of my rambling. Um, I played this game over the past week and I thought it was charming and endearing and uh, let's just jump into it so I can show you what's going to happen or show you what this game is about. I'm still a little confused. Oh, that's my favorite part. The actual like running animation because it's so smooth. Okay, so you get daily login bonuses very similar to what uh, you used to get with Gems of War. And it's a card based game and, and you'll see it's card based chaotic type game. Um, but it's kind of interesting. So what you can do, that's one of the avatars you can have for the game. And I'll show you. You are this girl named Mew. And there's an interdimensional library that keeps the information for all the realms together. Um, but something happened to it and it shattered. So now instead of having one core library, they have multi uh, they have several smaller libraries around the dimensions or the inner dimension to keep everything together for convenience sake Which is literally what they say So this is your main character. Her name is Mew um, She is the original character of the game so you can have her with glasses without glasses in a bikini different types of stuff, right? Um, this is Sela. She comes in later after you've completed a couple missions, she is a library apprentice. Um, I don't know that much about her because I haven't completed the game that far just yet. But, you know, there she is in her bathing suits and cat ears, stuff like that. And this is Delphine. Um, this is the avatar that you saw that I had. I like Delphine because she is taller and she's an adult woman. Um, Besides, I think she just looks better in her swimsuits than the other two because she's an adult woman. So I like having Delphine. The problem is, is that the game centers around you. So while you can change the title screen avatar, you can't change the in-game avatar just yet that I've seen. So let me show you the shop. Um, so you can go ahead and you can purchase from the PlayStation Store with real money, the magical gems that you need to purchase things from the shop. Um, so you can purchase card packs 
uh, which is fine. You can grind money to purchase card packs, that's not a problem. Uh, you can purchase these items, recovery items, stuff like that. I haven't needed those yet. I don't know how you get these four leaf clover type things. I'd love to get the four leaf clovers to unlock these people because they're very useful in battle. They're called fellows and I'll show you what fellows are in a second. And you get one of these gems for completing a mission. Um, and you can't go back and you can't grind gems. So you have to literally like complete 50 missions in order to get 50 gems to unlock one of these which is okay but it kind of sucks now there's a i forgot who that's for uh, oh yeah marine cherry uh yeah delphine cat ears you can unlock their costumes and they do different things so I'm not going to purchase anything because I don't have enough to purchase anything. I'm going to show you the cards and then we're going to dive into the story. This story, this game does have some voice acting, but that's only in the introduction of the game. Once you actually get into the game proper, there's no more voice acting. So these are the cards that you can have in your decks. Ooh, am I? Is that? No, it's 56. Um, and they do different things and they give you different stats and buffs and boosts and all this other kind of stuff. Um, you can level up your cards, you can combine your cards, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. I haven't really explored that yet since I'm so new to the game. Nothing is leveled up to the point where it's ready to do any of that other kind of stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, what is this fellow ah yeah so these are the fellows that you can have um do i have this fellow? no i do have zhong zui but why is there another zhong zui over here that's weird that's really weird um train them oh okay so you can take your fellow and you can give them items and that can raise their stats don't know why I have two Sungjuis Zungis I, 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 I don't know it's weird it's weird it's a weird game um, we're gonna go into story mode and it's one of those chaotic games we're gonna play a basic level I'm gonna play the first level and I'll show you the dialogue and everything else like that that goes into the game. We're gonna play it without the fellows. Just so I can show you what it looks like with the fellows, what it looks like without the fellows. And then we're gonna play the next mission. So this is Mew. The thing I like about this, I like the art style of this game. I like the character design, the foreground and the background design. Um, I like the fact that the characters blink that really gives it some personality. I don't understand why the hell she has a cat on her head, but this game is very JRPG-ish. And what I mean by that is, it's like hyper anime personality because in an anime, it runs itself and you don't have to really like scroll through the dialogue. It's there in a neat little package. In the JRPG, it's like that, but exasperated to the nth degree. And it gets tiresome. Like I played, I bought one of the Neptunia games and I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be, it's like Hyper Dimension Neptunia, I think it was. Oh, excuse me. And I was like, this is going to be a simple game. I can get into it. I found myself getting really annoyed with the game. Like the characters were overly dramatic and they were doing too much. And like they were trying to do fan service with something that I'm not personally interested in, which is lolly characters. I'm like, I, I, I just, it just doesn't appeal to me. So I, I put that game down and the grinding and everything else like that in the game wasn't enjoyable. Like some JRPGs, like my standard for JRPGs is um, Final Fantasy VII. Came from Japan. I think they did a phenomenal job with the balancing of that game. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. But that's a JRPG that I'm like, holy crap, that was done well. Um, but others that have followed suit haven't really done 
well like that to me so i don't really get into the jrpg genre but this has jrpg elements you can play with people online um but with the jrpg back to my original point with the jrpg story mode in this game it makes me not care so i end up just like skipping their dialogue so i can get to the action but i'll read this for you so you can get a sample of what the ebb and flow of the conversation between characters is like so when there's a character with a giant chest in this game that you see first which is the eye candy that's supposed to draw you in which is eris she is the head librarian of this qra library but we're not going to see her until way later if we see her at all in this video so mew this game starts now what should i do the game starts now what should i do should i start by exploring the outside bit of fourth wall breaking Zhuangzi, or Zhuangzi, Zhuangzi. Outside sounds good. Yes, let's go. We have to explore the library before we leave. Oh, the library? Only a part of the library is currently in use. There are not enough people for the whole building. You're here now, so we can start exploring the rest of the library. Okay, we'll start with the library then. You know what I noticed? You're always so energetic, Mew. Huh, really? Well, I do hear that a lot. Being energetic is good, I guess. <sighs> Did you just sigh? It's not because you're too loud or anything like that. You know, despite her character supposedly being a, melancho a melancholy, like spirit, ethereal, codicey spirit, whatever, I actually, uh, 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 oh shoot, what do they call it? I actually relate more to that character because I feel the same way about overly energetic people that just bouncing off the walls for no reason. It's like, dude, you, you make me tired just looking at you. Please, can you please just calm down for a second? Oh, okay. Okay, so here is the game in its nutshell it's literally you're running down a track moving from side to side trying to get collectibles um since this is a basic level one area i'm gonna get the items you'll see them pop up on screen um the green plus is health that you can get because you see the barriers off in the distance you know what's crazy is every time i explain things in games this is a side note I'm always pointing at the TV screen and pointing at what I'm talking about. Like, you can literally see my finger pointing as I explain things. It's crazy as hell. But, the green plus replenishes your health. You see the hurdles in the distance. You can hit them. That drops your health and your fever. I'll get to that in a second. The blue gems are fever gems. So, as you collect them, it builds up a percentage meter in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. When you get 100% of it, it takes you to this realm where you run literally just like this and you have money which are the coins and experience which are the purple rectangles that you can just run through and freely collect and the chest gives you items and that's pretty much it so we're gonna go through it and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works so here we go and sometimes if you're nice enough you can finesse it where you can get both items at once see and that gives you experience points and you can hop through both if you can manage it through. Um, but it gets harder to manage at the later levels, not because, um, yep, see, Codex Fragment. And I just need one more to get the fever. There it is. So. Here is the area that I was telling you about where you run through and you get as much gold as you can and XP as you can um, by running through it. I usually just like to stick to the bottom and um, try to eat up as much XP as I can. And then it dumps you right back out onto the uh, racetrack and you finish your race. Now in the lower right hand corner there's a triangle thing. I don't know how that works yet. It confuses me. It changes your lead Request symbol. So now I'm going to fight this one. At the end of every track running portion, you run into a boss fight like this. And it shows you your cards and the cards you have at your disposal. And it gives you 15 seconds to get ready. And now you have an auto attack that counts down. 
I'm strong enough that I took it out in one hit. So you have an auto attack that counts down um, and it hits the enemy every time the thing goes around the circle and you can click on different cards to give you different status effects like uh, you can have a constant thing wearing away at the enemy's health you can have something to buff your strength something to buff your defense and something to heal yourself and the people that you have with you and at the end of every battle you get a new card oh I don't have that one okay don't have sister brown so okay and then they have a little exploration yep and you get items and now it's the wrap-up of this episode I wonder what do you think is this building was well when it was first found there were many codices in storage all the rooms in the building were filled with codices that even the magic librarians had never seen before Wow those codices are what made the library what it is today so could that mean the building was a library in the past too? I don't know. If it was a library though, the librarians would have known. Hmm, you're right. A magic library the librarians didn't know about. I don't think Eris knows much about the history behind this place either. This building has been abandoned for a long time. There's probably no one who knows its true story. You think so? Maybe the people who led the exploration of this area might know something. Hmm, not really. I looked through the records they left but I couldn't find any details. You looked through the records? Why? Oh, because, well... Hmm, you're hiding something, aren't you, Mew? What? No! I looked it up because it's about where I was going. Hmm, I guess. Ha! <laughs> weird, weird stuff. Weird dialogue stuff that make me go, I don't care. So, this is like the first chapter and at the end of every chapter, on the very last activity that you can do, like you see next to like that green mark, it says N to N plus codex. That means those are the type of cards that you can get for completing the mission. You get a new card every time you complete it. XP 30, XP 40, that's what you get for completing it. Um, and at the very last one, it'll say rare or something better than rare. Um, when you complete the last mission for the first time. After you complete the last mission for the last time, or after you complete the last mission for the first time, it changes uh, and it drops you down to the more common cards that you can get. So now, we're gonna go all the way down. Uh, require librarian level 10. You can see I'm level 19, level eight, level six, level three. So before the game moves forward, any like substantial uh, amount in the storyline it asks you to get up to librarian level 30 and I'm level 19 I'm not gonna get 30 before the end of this video um, but we're gonna go Tesla a request for you library lounge and now I'm gonna get my fellows um, I'm not gonna go into the detail of who these people are if you want there's a link in the description below you can go to the PlayStation Network and download this free game yourself and read through it but uh, yeah, there are people I can bring with me and they're very helpful in fights. This is kind of like a cookie clicker where you don't have to click as much. So um, we'll see if I get bored, I'm just going to fast forward through this and get to the actions. You have a guess, Mew. A guess? Who could it be? I don't know, but she says she's journeyed far to get here and is insisting on meeting with you with the librarian. What should I do? Is that so? Bring her in then. Hmm, I already kicked her out. I told her no peddlers, but I'll bring her back. Uh, okay. I'm Tesla. I have a request to make the Curare Magic Library. And a lot of the characters tend to be very feminine, very buxom. Welcome. Do you have trouble finding us? I'm here on an important and serious matter. I'm not some peddler. Oh, sorry. So, how can we help you? I heard this library has started to collect codices. Hey, how'd you know? Everyone knows already. We know that the magic librarians are on the move. Hey, really? Am I going to be famous now? He, are you blushing? Should I practice autographs now? You're not a celebrity, you know. What if somebody asks for an autograph? That's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, and that's what I don't like. Like, when they transition scenes, you have to hit the X button 
you have to hit the OK button again to pull up the next line of dialogue. There was a couple of times when I first started playing this where I was just sitting here for like two, three minutes waiting for something to happen, then I hit the X button and it keep going forward, went forward. I do really like the character design in this game though, it's very cool. They have very cool costumes. So anyway, I'm here because, oh sorry, we shouldn't treat a guest like this. Would you like some tea? Oh, you have tea? Then Darjeeling, please. Huh? We don't have that. Then Assam, perhaps. Earl Grey is fine too. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, understand. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Never mind, T. Then let me get to the point now. Like, uh, waste. It's my duty to serve tea to a guest. Please hang on. All right, I'll take any tea. Yeah, actually, I have some special. I want to serve. Oh, you have a tea set ready. You must like tea. No, it just makes me feel like I'm on a picnic. It's tea I made. You're the first try, Tesla. What an honor. What kind is it? It's going to taste horrible. Honey martyr melon tea. Oh, not bad. A cool fruit tea is great to quench the thirst. Huh? But it's hot tea. What? Why are you staring at me? Oh, I was going to see how you managed to drink the tea with that helmet. Oh, she took the tea off. Okay. I mean, the helmet off. Oh, I forgot about my helmet. Pardon me. Oh, I thought a straw would pop out or something. How disappointing. What are you talking about? Of course that wouldn't happen. So how's the tea? Well, I've never had hot tea with watermelon seeds in it. And honey too. Oh, I know. It's so sweet, my tongue is numb. Oh great. That's great. See? The dialogue in this game is so stupid that I prefer not to waste my time. So, yeah, I could get like the fever, but I, I generally don't. Like, I ground for it and it didn't do anything like out of the ordinary so now unless I'm like going for something I don't even bother to get those like I go more for the experience on the track and um, the uh, uh, the codex fragments you know if there's nothing like this stretch right here then I'll go ahead and I'll get it but not because it's like oh it's uber important that I get this but only because it's like well it's a thing to do and that's kind of how I feel about it. It's like, a lot of what goes on in this game kind of feels like it's a thing to do. Which is fine, you know, if that's, uh, um, it may be a merit of the game to some people. I haven't gotten deep enough in this game to, uh, like, really be able to judge it well enough. And, to be fair, like, every different level you get, like, a different person like a different chapter like you'll get somebody different for the boss than you will the average fighting whatever you see yeah and like you have to know what your abilities are before going into the battle um because they don't tell you in the game so you're just going back and forth like this and just just clicking and hoping that the wing and the prayer works you know, and I go around, and when you run out of something, you can cast it again like this. And it's like, alright. You know. And she's dead. Cookie clicker. Clicker. The triangle is... is the triangle is something. I forgot what it is. And the square... Um, triangle is for that red potion. I don't know what it is. And the square is for the green potion. That heals you. But I haven't needed that yet, so I think I'm okay. And you saw my people leveled up. Great. The cards become stronger, but they have a max out level. And then you can, like, appraise them. And, uh, make the cards level cap higher. So now, I'm level 20. There's a cat. There it is. You know, see, she has a cat on her head all the time. Just making damn sense. Whatever. It's good, right? It's rude not take hospitality. Thank you for the tea. Like, I really don't care. Uh, and you can slow down the video to read what they're saying. I'm just trying to close this mission out. I feel like I would Okay, I don't care. Like, they go on and it feels like they go on about absolutely jack shit. And I'm like, it's such a waste of my time. You know, especially since it's not, oh my God, see, we get to the next mission and she hasn't even told us about herself. 
there's an iron continent in the north. Ancient relics lost a long time ago are known to be buried there. Mechanical civilization, right? And I'm an archaeologist looking for relics there. What an archaeologist, you're a scholar, blah, 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 blah. Are we gonna change location so we can see something different? You can download the game and read it on your own time, that's fine. Alright, I have Codex Fragment, that didn't mean anything. Uh, like, the running portion of this game doesn't get any more difficult than this. I know I said it gets a little more difficult later in the game, but that's because they start packing more stuff in a little more than they did before. Um, so it's not as easy to slip between the two and get um, like everything all in one fell swoop like you could a couple levels before. Yeah, like it's, it's more of a higher priority for me to get these experience tokens than it is anything else. I mean, I could spend money to buy something, but what I could spend money to buy is so mundane that there's no point around just getting experience. Alright, and you know, the, the enemy level gradually goes up. You know, and I just keep pressing it until I have the ability to not press it anymore. You know, I do pretty good. I do fairly well. Just keeping an eye on what you can, what you can. Keep an eye on your cooldowns. Keep an eye on your health. Making sure your buffs stay up. You know, regeneration, people's health gradually comes back per second. That's nice. And now she's dead. Cool. Everyone leveled up, except for the level 11 lady. And everyone is ladies for right now. Like, see, that's the kind of fan service art that you get rare. And that was, this is the last mission. So I get this card, this rare card for it. And I imagine that oh, I'm level 21 now, and I get a whole bunch of fragments. And the thing about the fragments is you can collect enough fragments to make whatever it's saying, but it takes like a thousand fragments. Hmm. Don't care. Ah, yes. Now the next mission is coming up. Ah, she's a fellow with me now. Okay, cool. So yeah, see, um, it'll tell you how many stages there are and what it takes to clear them and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just a, I can get a normal to rare codex. Um, and I have to be, what, level 12 to do this? Yeah, so if you're not a high enough level, then you can go back and you can grind at any other levels and you'll be fine. Main story, sub story. I think 35, 45, 47, 53, and 67. That's the highest I can go. All right. I don't know how often this game updates, and I don't know if you can run out of missions since it's a free-to-play game, but it's interesting for what it is. You know, a cookie clicker where you got to have, like, resource management for your cards and do different types of stuff. It's interesting. Don't you think the library looks a bit dirty? Tesla will clean the library, go and help. Like, they do mundane things for something that's supposed to be so special, which is why, like, the story really doesn't grip me. But if you're looking for a mindless activity, this is absolutely free. I've done everything that I've done without grinding too much. Um, like, just playing the level one boards a couple of times just to get the feel of the game grind you up enough to uh, um, be able to manage in whatever fights that you come against. So, hey, it's a cool game. Uh, not the most gripping as far as storyline, but if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking for something to kill time, if you're looking for something with a smooth soundtrack, 
this is it. So there's a link in the description below, like I said before, if you have a PlayStation 4, because I don't believe this is on PlayStation 3, but if you have a PlayStation 4 and you want to give it a whirl, um, I would suggest that you do. It's really cool, um, and you don't need to pay to have fun with this game. And that's the important part. You can have fun. Uh, Storyline aside, this is a pretty kind of fun game. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm cutting the video here. It is the weekend, so you know what that means. Eat good food, drink good drink, be in good company. If you are watching this and you are at work for shame, and I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope I was able to bring some happiness to your day. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me and coming to hang out. And I am the outlier and I will see you all in the next video.